welcome to the Activity Car Live. Now, let's hear for our special guest host, Mike Hartlib. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, happy good morning. It's a Friday. It's Friday already. And um, I'm honored that we're asked to be on the call. And I got three leaders here. They're all giggling. You, you wouldn't believe what these three top producers are doing before the call. They're playing rock, paper, scissors, okay? And um, it, you got to be around these guys more to, to, to get a good chuckle out of this. Anyhow, we're honored we're asked. We're going to be talking about um, something near and dear to me, I think, and to these guys here. Why NatCon? And why did I choose these three? They're relatively successful, okay? They're in the top, I don't know. Stephanie, what number are you in the company? Um, I, I would like to say it's a higher number, but I believe it's number 12. All right. And Brian and Michelle, you guys are in the top, what, 20? For sure. Yeah. And for okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you, you guys are relatively, <laughs> relatively successful at making money and following the system. Why do you guys still go to conference? Mm. Brian, start with you. You, Mike, you broke the rules. I won. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inside joke for everybody that's listening at home. Um, I think um, I I think people forget honestly what's at stake here. You know, um, you said you wanted a shot. You said you want to be good. You know, you said you 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 said you wanted to make a lot of money, and it's crazy because when it comes to events, you we, we you know people fight them. It's, it's it's just like I never understood it. I ne I never fought an event because I knew that to get better, I had to be around better. I knew I sucked. Hell, my first twenty appointments, um, I didn't make a single sale. I, I knew I sucked. I knew I had to get better. You know, but the thing is, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take a long time to do my first 20 appointments either. Like it took me like a week or two, a week and a half when I first started, you know what I mean? Um, but like I sucked, so I didn't battle it. The only, I guess the only objection I had was I didn't have the money for it. And I, I, I want, I want to, I want to say that's where like 80 to 90% of that have an objection of going, that's, you know, that fear of, but I got around you, Mike, and I got around Andy Riddle, and you guys made it possible. You know what I mean? You guys helped me because I asked. So um, I don't want to say a lot, but, like, for me, it was never a thing of, like, I can't go. I'm like, I don't have the money to go. Can y'all help me? Like, if y'all help me, I will go. I need to go. You know what I mean? Good, 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 good. You haven't missed one yet either, have you? Um. I wish I could say no, but like two years ago, there was a huge hurricane and everything was bought already. Um, and I missed it. So I, I can't say I've gone a hundred percent. I got 99.9%. .9%. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Michelle, how about you? Huh? It was the first breakthrough that we ever had. Uh -huh. And that, that should have been there. Michelle, how about you, buddy? You, um, you, how long have you been here now, Michelle? Uh, this is going on my fourth year. And um, you've qualified for all the trips, too, right? Mm-hmm. Why do you still go to conference? You're making money. Yeah, when, um, you know, hi, guys. Uh, but you had sent that question yesterday, uh, just kind of letting us know what, what the chat would be about. And it was like, oh, uh, you know, you're you're successful. Why do you go? And, like, I looked at Brian. I just, like, kind of chuckled because my success but it's just funny because it's relative you know like like maybe if i'm talking to to my friends outside of this business or or maybe maybe i'm successful in my family it's not to knock you know how much i've grown it's just like when you see what this opportunity can do and what other success looks like it's like i am a i'm a blip like i'm on my way but I, i'm not there and i think like the conferences have everything to do with how much you grow and it, it's the it's the training it's the networking it's the leadership um and then it's the exposure um 
you know, I don't come from a place where we all get together and they spill all your secrets and, and rich people tell you how to make money. Like that's like, what is it? It's just, but this is real. And, and we have a chance to go and it's, yes, it, there's a cost, but it's like, what's the cost to not. And I think like, I, I don't know, it, it's been every bit of a difference in this business. And every time you go, if, even if you go once and you don't feel like it made a difference, it did. You know, when you go again, you're going to see a bigger change and a bigger change. So I think like my biggest change will probably be this one until April. And that'll be my biggest one. And then again, and, and that's how it'll keep going. Got it. Got it. That's good. Very, very good. All right. All right. Stephanie, what about you, buddy? How long you been with us? Um, going in my fifth year, which is crazy. I can't believe it's been almost five years. But, Have um, you missed any conferences? Uh, one, I missed this past break breakthrough because I was having Lola. So I was breaking through at home while y'all were breaking through in Orlando. Oh, so you uh, had your own breakthrough with a baby. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> so yeah, I missed that. Um, All right. But, you know, if I could have still made it there, I, I would have. But the timing was like a few days. So I'm happy that I stayed close to home. But you know, it's just like Michelle and Brian were saying, like, if you, that's what you do. If you want to consistently get better, you consistently attend all meetings. Not only is it one of our eight steps, but I mean, you go to grow. Like, that's what we say. You want to get around the people who know more, who can pour into you. And it's like, yeah, now we have them four times a year, but in every quarter of that year, I'm in a different place in my growth and different place in my life and my mindset. And so something that said it, this NatCon maybe was said at the last NatCon, but this NatCon, I'm going to hear it differently. And it's going to, it could be one thing that just changes your business. So yes, you have to invest in your own business because we are business owners. So we invest in ourselves to grow and get around those people who can help lift us up. Good. Very, very good. Well, let, let me, you know, I want to say one thing. Let me tell you why I go. It fills me up. I'm drained, all right? After 90 days, I get drained, okay? The older you get, the easier it is to get drained. So don't be laughing, Michelle. And um, um, see, I want to get around leaders that have vision. Thank God Andy Albright and Andy Riddle has a vision that's big enough where they can help people with dreams get what they want to get. That's what it's all about. People with vision. And um, because when their vision is big enough, it allows us to come be part of it. And um, that is if you have a dream. And every person on this call has a dream. You may not think you have a dream. Maybe you have a dream of losing weight. Maybe you have a dream of being a better parent. Maybe you have a dream of, of getting a house. Whatever the dream is, you got to get around people that have a vision. And um, I think it's important that we do that because if we don't have a dream, we're dead. And um, you three have been, have your own, each one of you have your own dream. So, Brian, let me ask you this. How do we get the most out of, out of NatCon? How do you get the most out of it? Um. Well, I think for everybody is different. You know what I mean? Um, I can tell you how I got the most out of Nakon. I, I've been with, uh, by the way, if you guys um, forgot to introduce myself, my name is Brian Rojas. I've been with the company for six and a half years, and I'm direct to Mike Hartley, baby. Um, <laughs> um, I think, though, um, every I, piggyback riding off of what Steffi said, um, every Nakon, every event is different. You know what I mean? Every event. Like, I remember my first event, why I went. My first event, my grandmother had died 24 hours prior. And that event, I went to that event because I needed to get the hell out of Tampa and all the commotion. I couldn't afford to get emotional with my siblings. I couldn't afford to be next to the family because somebody had to make some money to pay for that funeral. My grandmother didn't have life insurance and she was like my mother. That event, I just went to get the hell out of Tampa. 
You see what I'm saying? My second event, um, and, and what I found in that event was hope. I was going to get out of Tampa to get out of the whole commotion, but when I got there, I'm getting chills right now talking about it. What I found was an opportunity, hope. I found a, a, like a group of people. See, my whole life I lived thinking I was crazy for wanting things because corporate America just put a $17 tag an hour in my head, and that's it. That's what I was worth. I went to this event, and I found people that were just as crazier, if not crazier, than me. I'm like, I'm home. <laughs> you know what I mean? For me, it was, there's, like, I have hope. And it feels like, it feels like church. It feels good. So that was my first event. Then you go into the second event where I'm starting off my first year, and I'm not seeing profitability, and I quit in three months. And then, Mike, you reach back out to me, and this is why I love you so much, because you didn't have to. You went and grabbed me out of Starbucks, and I remember I was dirty in a construction suit, you know, construction suit looking like Bob the Builder, and it was a, a, a Saturday <laughs> night, and I'm telling you, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to do it, but I was afraid. I was afraid of the failure, and that's where I learned that failure is a beautiful thing, and you taught me that. You know, and every time, you know, I used to have this preconceived notion that like when you hit a hard stomp, it's like God telling you that that's not the way to go. And let me tell you something for all the Christian folks, for all the people that believe in a God, I don't care what denomination you are. That is bull crap. Almost. I almost want to say bullshit because I'm Christian, too, but I didn't want to curse. But you, cause you can't curse and put God in the same sentence. But I said it right. Because let me tell you something, that's where God tells you or shows you if he really wants it or not. But most people look at a, 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 like a problem and they say they, they, they use God as their reason why they're not going to do it. And they, they, they have a vision that God told them not to do it. B.S. B.S., man. How about this? You are more than a conqueror. And that's what I've been learning. You know what I'm saying? My third event, profitability. I was crying with Andy Riddle and I was telling them, hey, what can I do to be more profitable? I'm buying leads. I'm selling. I'm getting a check. And that's when I started learning how to be a master of skills. He told me, Brian, it's not what you're not what you're doing. It's what you're not doing. That's costing you to not be profitable. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm doing everything. I'm coming to conventions. I'm spending money. I'm doing this. I'm not living life. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing everything. It's like, okay, how many referrals do you get in the home? That's one. She's like, you're not doing the four basics. I'm like, I don't even know what the four basics are. Explain it to me. This happened in a convention, Mike, at dinner in a convention. See what I'm saying? So where most people are going for the show, I'm going to get around and getting my questions answered. I'm going to a convention to talk to somebody that can potentially change my life. And every convention has been like that. So I didn't know what referrals were. I didn't know that I had to get 15 referrals. I didn't know what annuities were. I didn't know how to recruit across the table. And for the past six years, this is what I've been trying to master. This, this right here, okay? So I met James, James Coleman, who taught me how to get 15 referrals in every home. I became a master of that. I can say I'm a master of that, okay? Um, I got around you, Mike. Do you remember when we used to go to, uh, at, at that diner? And yeah. you used to pour it. I think you bought me food because you felt sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I, I felt like I worked so much at the time, like, like you saw the work ethic. You saw that I suck, but I had the work ethic. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You used to invite me out. But when you used to invite me out, I poured like you you poured into me. And I and, and, and that became a thing. And you used to just, man, I used to ask you, how do you get annuities? And I didn't understand it. You taught me the visuals, the the nonverbal cues. But I've always, you know what I mean? And so like the past event, Mike. You know, I froze in front of Andy Albright when we were recruiting the fourth basic. And everybody saw it. And to everybody's eyes, 
I felt like they felt sorry for me. Bro, I'm getting taught by a multi, multi, multi millionaire in front of people that could have been them and I was chosen. I learned something. You know what I learned? That I suck. <laughs> and it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to say that because that's the lowest I've ever been. And, and, and in terms of like recruiting, that's the that's the suckiest I'll ever get. I'll never get suckier than that because I learned something. I'll you know that's what good. I mean? That's so good. bro, it, it's just a matter of growing. You know, I, I want I want that. And that's why I go to the events. I don't know why gotcha. everybody goes to the events. All right, cool. Gotcha. Yeah. Good. Very good, Brian. How about you, Michelle? What uh, what do we got to do to get the most out of NatCon? Um, for me, it's uh, it's about getting there early. It's about staying there late. It's about um, I think it's about just like. Don't have it for new people. It's kind of cool because they don't know what to expect. So their mind is going to be blown. Right. Okay. And then for us now, like for me to get the most, I have to like channel whatever Avenue I need to get the most better at right now. Like what's going to serve me the most. So I need to find well, one, anytime I can get around Andy Albright, I'm going to do it. Anytime I can get around Andy Riddle, I'm going to do it. Um, even as much as he is here in Tampa, it's still not enough. Um, you know, I need to figure out people who are a little bit, you know, not a little bit, a lot ahead of me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For way further ahead of me. And I just need to figure out if they could spend 20 minutes with me. Maybe 20 is even too much to ask. Let me get my questions answered. I could really boil it down in five. If you guys just spent about five minutes with me, but it's like, it's just about figuring out which Avenue I want to go this way. And then like put in a little pins here so I can pick up next time we're all together and just asking those questions there. So like to get, to get the most out of it, I think I just have to be open. Um, I have to be everywhere. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you can't miss anything. So don't, I'm not going to go to the bathroom when they're, cause you're just, in order to get the most, you have to be the most present. Um, I have to take the most notes. I think you, and then for new people get with your upline and say, Hey, what do you think I need to work on? Who do you think I need to be talking to? Um, and cause that, that's why that's what I'm doing. So it doesn't matter where you are in the business. Like there's people ahead of you and there's people that can help you get, even if it's one step, it makes all the time that you spend, all the money that you spent, the hotels, the, this, the, that, if you just got like two steps further than what you are, it's so worth being there. Uh, so I think that that's, that's how you maximize, you know, whatever it's like 48 hours i don't even know if you can it's not i don't even know if it's a full 72 so it's like to maximize you just need to be there on time listen take notes connect um network your behind off make friends like i mean you you already you're there you might as well like blows my mind when people spend all the money freak out to get there and then they're outside on the phone dealing with the the drama that they have back home it's like don't bring it with you. Drop that baby off at the door. Take care of what you need to take care of and pick it up at five o'clock on Sunday. Like, I don't know. That's what I'm going to do. Michelle, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his fireworks. Y'all see his That fireworks? was good, Michelle. <laughs> Leave it at the door. Oh, back it up, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Stephanie. How about you, buddy? What uh, what action plan? What what action plan uh, should we? What what should we be doing when we get to NATCA? I mean, really? Um, uh, it's a lot of what they said. It's um, you know, one of the big things is is like, I would say, make sure you've got pen and paper. But all the carriers always have multiple pens and multiple <laughs> notebooks for us to bring. So if you so happen to forget your lucky notebook no worries there's like 30 different booths with all our carriers where they have working pens and paper and so like that is huge like if you're not taking notes why are you even there so it's like you you're there to learn there's no way to remember all the amazing you know things that you're gonna take in during the event if you're not writing stuff down you're doing yourself a disservice so a be there early. Be sit as 
close up to the front as you can. Be listening and be actively listening intently. Try, don't just like days off because it's like 40 degrees below zero in there and you're freezing cold and you didn't bring your warm fuzzy socks like a smart girl should. And you're getting, you know, it's cold in there. Let's just put it that way. It's cold, but you want to be up front and you want to be awake and you want to be taking notes and you want to be the one who's um, getting the most out of it or else you just wasted that investment. Um, and yeah, I make sure that um, I will message some of the top leaders, you know, like Michelle said, way above me. I see how I can get around them. Other people that are doing or uh, doing good in the business, try and set things up before I go. Um, and if I, I don't set it up before I go, you know, when I'm there, I'm seeking them out at that time. What am I trying to learn? What am I trying to get better at? And who in the company is the best at that certain thing? So, yeah, I'll seek them out trying to get lunches or dinners, you know, or just five minutes if they can. Um, those are what you need to do. And it's like, you know, I do want to touch on something Brian said. He, you know, when people run into obstacles or things they're not good at or a bump in the road that they start telling themselves that it's God telling them, you know, that this isn't for them. That's, it, that's the opposite way of thinking. It's God testing you to see if you deserve to, to make it through to this opportunity to have the riches that come down the road. You're, you're being built right now and withstanding all of the obstacles so that you can receive all the things that come with success in this business. So it's like when you hit an obstacle, you don't isolate. If you figure out, oh, now I'm 50 bucks too short to get my plane ticket. Well, you don't just sit there by yourself for days pondering. You got to reach out to somebody or, you know, you lost your child care. Reach out to somebody who can help you figure that out. Don't just sit there and isolate and say, oh, guess it's meant to be. God doesn't want me to go because it's, you, it's just copping out. It's copping out so that you don't have to do the hard work. The difference between me, Brian, and Michelle and other people is we don't find a way around a problem. We go straight through the problem and we make sure that we are counseling with you guys to get there. So it's like, you know, make sure you're there, show up early, be prepared, be listening. Um, yeah. That's you like the it. fireworks. I do. <laughs> like, boom, boom, boom. So, you know, you're so right. You know, you know what makes you three great, by the way? Your dreams are tied in to include the people you love, okay? Now, why is that important? Because you'll give up on yourself before you give up on the people you love. Andy Albright's dream was about his family, about the people he loved, and it's about his team, okay? He's, he's I mean, he, we just went through a crisis with our, with our ARC system. Did it slow us down? No. I mean, I loved when Albright was talking on the last call back in the good old days. Now, let me tell you about a couple of these good old days. We used to put five and six people in our hotel room. We used to sleep on floors. We did whatever we could to get to a conference because we all had a dream. And what was the dream? Whatever it was, it was a dream. And we get, I've got to learn to think bigger about my dreams. The greats have big dreams. And they keep saying the same thing over and over and over. I mean, just think about it. I mean, Brian, Jesus Christ had a dream. He kept saying the same thing over and over and over and over. Martin Luther King, I have a dream. That's all he talked about. And these people, and, and, and the greats have these have these dreams that they don't change. And um, they, they're big enough to include everybody. That's what makes you three good, because you... You try to include everybody. Now, Brian, I got a question. What are you telling your team to do to go to conference when they're at conference? <clears throat> um, couple of things. It just depends. Like as a whole, is like let's let's be plugging in. You know what I mean? Like, like what's that mean? What's so, plugging in mean? So like, so it's going back to what Michelle said. It's not being like. 
you know, if you're taking time away from your sons and daughters and and parents and family, you know, and sacrificing or investing and in, in 48 hours worth of jam packed of material. Like I remember my um, put it like this. I remember my father in law told me he hates Michael Jacks, uh, Michael, my, Mike Tyson fights because <laughs> he went to go see one. And um, and it was the first round. He went to the restroom. By the time he came back, the fight was gone. <laughs> Mike had already knocked that person out, and he paid so much money for nothing. And sometimes in this business like that, you know, I know, I know for sure that I've been in a situation where I'm sitting down taking notes, and I hear something that totally changed. Like, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> uh, I, I want to say Mark Hutchinson. Breakthrough, Denver, Colorado. He showed us how he does the why home, how he brings out the pain. Now, for hundreds of us, that was a life-changing moment. I know for me it was. Okay? But I was present. And I bet you that there were people outside because their back hurt. There were people in a restroom because they had to go pee or poop um, or, or or just clean their face. Just, just dumb stuff. There are people taking phone calls. So for so so for me, that was gold. But for others, they have they have zero clues that they miss an opportunity like that. You know what I mean? And so for my team, I'm telling them, be present. Nothing else matters. This is a activity right here, okay? Everything else can wait. Handle it on your break. Handle it when you need to. Handle it when you're in your hotel. You see what I'm saying? Handle it at lunch. It doesn't, like right now, it's not a priority. And so sometimes when we go to these events, we want to act like we're so busy and so important that we miss the reason why we're actually there. You know, so it's like one of the things that I'm telling my guys is show, 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 be a leader by showing an example of what a leader does, because now you got people coming. Now they're going to see what you do. Make sure you're duplicating what you want in your team, coach. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Wow. Good job. Good it's job. Exactly, you know, but if the shoe fits, Cinderella. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. How about you, Michelle? What are you telling your team? So definitely what Brian said. Um, death, all of that. The co- all, all of that, what Brian said. That's so huge. Um, and then second, like, when you're not in that room or even before a trainer speak, just keep your hand out like this. Like, <laughs> say your name, smile, because I'm just going to, I'm going to introduce you to as many people as I think can impact your life as possible. Um, and, and you, and you want to do the same and it, it's like, I'm going to do the very best that I can to put you in front of people, but you make sure that you're doing it for yourself as well. Um, and I think like that right there is, is everything. Cause I remember being kind of ponied around when, when you took me and I, every other person is just like, Hey, this is, this is Michelle. She's in Tampa, blah, 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 blah. And it, I mean, I must've shaken, I don't, I don't know, over a hundred hands that, that weekend. And it was because of you, thank God. You know, so if, if I could do the same, I'm, I'm going to do that for my team, but I also want them to do it for themselves. And I want the other leaders on my team to, you know, you, yeah, you know, you're on my team. Yes. But eventually like right now, when they shake your hand, it's, it's not my team, it's your team. And they need to know who you are and go to the carriers, go to, go to the vendor tables and introduce yourself. And uh, right off the jump, you could say, Hey, you know, I'm part of the riddle team. I'm part of Mike's team. I'm part of Michelle's team. You can do that. But really, let them know who you are because maybe maybe you haven't sold the policy this time, but they will know who you are the next time. They will know who you are when you call them. Send them a text, you know, like you want to make friends with these people. So to I'm telling my team, be present, introduce yourself, um, and, and make sure that you network like a madman or woman. Good point. Very good point. How about you, Steph? What are you telling your team? Um, kind of branching off what Michelle said, um, I try and stress to them how important it is to get around the carriers and to make a friend before you need a friend. 
um, that was always burned into me. I mean, I still have in my phone from my very first conference, like my contact picture with Chris Norris is like me of the scared little me, like smiling next to Chris Norris, you know, like uh, I think and Gina. So like, that's where that first time I was terrified because I had no idea what I was doing or I was just like following the herd of, you know, a thousand people trying to get in front of the carriers. But like that, has built me these relationships over these years because I reached out my hand and said hello. And now I have people when I'm having questions or something on a case, like I have people I can call, Um, you know, and some of these carriers, like, I mean, you just grow to love them and like their people, like, you know, Pete from American Amicable, I'll never forget the first time he took me out because I did something good or I won something. And he bought me two steaks and two lobster tails. And at one dinner. At yeah, one dinner. One dinner in one sitting. And it's like, you know, you that was like making memories because it's really cool that you have somebody behind you that is, you know, at their home office that you could be like, Hey, I need help with this. And as long as you just keep doing what you're supposed to be doing, like they keep reaching their hand out. And that's all we need in this business. We all need a little bit of help. So the carriers is like, you know, what you should be doing. And like Michelle said, make sure they know who you are. Yes, it's good. They know who, what team you're on, but get to know them, ask them questions, tell them about yourself. Um, And, you know, I can't stress enough, like being prepared. So y'all, I'll say it again. It's cold in there bring a blanket it's winter time in dallas or you know in texas so bring your boots bring your jackets dress warm don't get there and be like oh my god it's so cold and now i have to waste 20 minutes of this going out to buy a blanket and then coming back in you know just know it's going to be cold so dress for it. Bring bring whatever you need to bring. Make sure that you're ready to sit down your butt in that seat and just be an example. I mean, how does it look if, uh, you know, all us top leaders are all walking in the back, talking in the back while somebody is speaking? Like that is not respecting the person on stage who worked really hard to be on stage and I'm sure is going to be teaching us something important. So get in there on time. Stay your butt in the seat, have your pen in your hand or your recording and just focus on what's going on. And, you know, hopefully when you leave, you can just go back to all the other life stuff that's happening outside those doors. But while you're in those doors, let's, you know, uh, be respectful to the person on stage. Good point. Good point. The three of you have spoken on stage before and it's um, it's nerve wracking up there, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, I want to say something that's probably going to offend a couple people. Good. I think we become whips. I think if it's not convenient, we're not going to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I know for a fact that these three people struggled in the beginning to go to their first conference. I know it. But if it if it was if it wasn't convenient, they got a lot more out of it. Like when I said that we used to we used to have six or seven people sleep in a room and people sleeping on floors, I meant it. But let me tell you something that also created some of the funniest moments in our lives. Some of the like Andy Riddle has a picture of me lying in a bed. <laughs> yeah, you three seen it where he was going to make pillowcases of it, right? But those are experiences. Those are memories. And um, Brian, you guys rented Airbnbs, right? Oh, we've done. Yeah, we've done crazy things too, man. I mean, yeah. we've done Airbnbs. We, we, yeah. You know, we rented a whole van to go to North Carolina with a crazy person that wanted to kill me for p- speaking Spanish. It was, <laughs> but those are crazy moments too. And they're, they're the funniest in hindsight, right? Like, it's just you never know who you got with you and it's just it, it's cool it's part of the journey it's part of the story you know I, I, you know I, I, yeah, I love it you know i heard uh riddle tell me when him and long went around chris long chris long slept in the bathtub 
Okay. So I, I think, why do I say we're wimps? Because if it's not convenient, we don't do it. Yeah. Okay. You can go, go whatever it takes. You got to do it. And um, um, I know sometimes it's struggled. Like, you know, right now we have another, when's our next event after this? Do you have any idea? What is that step? Should be April. So here's what I would do now. Don't tell me you can't afford to go. Start saving your freaking money now. Start selling some insurance. Uh -huh. forget, forget saving. Start selling some insurance. Oh, that too. Amen to that. Jesus oh. Christ. I mean, come on. Um, yeah, when, when, when Albright was talking about back in the good old days, I started thinking about that. I said, you know what? Back then we were fighters. We fought to get where we wanted to be. Today, it's like, oh, I can make it. Oh, I don't know if I can make it. What the hell is that? And you don't know if you can make it. There's nothing more important than this. Nothing. It's going to change you on the inside. And, um, you know, learn to fight for what you want. Jesus Christ, don't wait for somebody to hand it to you. I know, I know all three of these people struggle to get there. Well, I don't want to say struggles. That would be a wrong term. It was not convenient for them. Was it convenient for you, Michelle? Um, no, not convenient. And I didn't know any of you. <laughs> I only knew Mike. And it was like, uh, it was strange. It was uncomfortable. Uh, just because you don't know what you're walking into. It's not, never done anything like that before. So inconvenient and super out of my comfort zone for sure how about you stephanie was it comfortable for you or what, what was it was it convenient for you um no uh so for those of you who don't know me back when i had started i was taking care of my grandma and at the time she was 84 and she had dementia she lived with me and then mikey who was six was at the time of the convention he was one and angelo was like eight so if you guys don't have kids or have never been a caregiver let me just put this in perspective you know one year old 84 year old with dementia it's very difficult to find one human being who's not a family member who can care for those people at the same time you know that takes skill and and you know oh yeah hey can you just watch these three human beings that and be responsible for their lives for a few days while I'm just off in North Carolina learning and growing. So that was like, aside from the financial part, you know, I was grocery shopping out of my ex mother in law's pantry because she was an extreme couponer. So like, I didn't have money to eat and I, I had nothing and no immediate family in Florida to help me care for them while I went. But I somehow it all came together with your help, like you and Tomata, like you really went out of the way to help me plan it all out and figure it out. And, you know, and that takes putting aside ego. It's uncomfortable for new people to ask for help, especially financial help. You know, you might not be scared to ask for like, help on learning something but to put your ego and your pride aside and ask for help to figure out how to get somewhere especially if it involves money is scary but that's what we do and that's what we had to do if we wanted to grow like it was either that or i was gonna keep living paycheck to paycheck for the rest of my life and that's not what my dream was at all wow wow brian you um you, you're, you've had carpools full of people going with you, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I did. But before that, Mike, you remember you were the one carpooling me. You know what I mean? Like you helped me out so much. <clears throat> and I, I, let me just say this. I'm not afraid to say that. Yes, I struggled. Like for me, it was a struggle. Like I was broke, broke. Uh, but here's the thing. I was not broke minded. Right. You know, like I was, I didn't have money. I like, I, 
you know, like put it like this. I didn't have money to eat for three days out in North Carolina. So uh, again, I was broke. I was not broke money. We we're going to figure it out. I remember I grabbed Crystal and I said, baby, pack a duffel bag full of like canned beans, bring what, bring our, um, like our heated, heated oven and bring a pan and that olive oil, that, that great olive oil and, and a dozen eggs. Cause I know how to ball on the budget, bro. I know how mm-hmm. to make some eggs and some refried beans. I ain't scared. You know what I mean? So like, thankfully, somebody, I don't know if it was you or somebody else, but I remember people just, if y'all went to cook out, y'all would stop me, you know? Um, it, it's just stuff like that. And I, I look at that back. I'm like, how can I not pay it forward? You know right. What I mean? can I not help, you know, you know, so. the reason, you know, the reason I drove you get you in the car with me. Cause Andy Riddle did it for me. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's it, it, it's. I hang around with Riddle, and I uh, and I uh, you get like Riddle. I'm I'm hanging around with you, so I get to know you. Um, it's uh, like there was one conference Riddle and I were at, and uh, I had a toothache. I had to get my tooth pulled in mm-hmm. Burlington, North Carolina, and he st- we talk about that. I mean, and I'm sitting in the lobby with one of those. Uh, what the hell's the name of that place with the milkshakes? Huh. Oh. But it was like a goth in there. No, that milkshake place. That with the hamburgers. Remember what I, um, okay, I, I want to say? Cookout. Cookout. Oh. So I went and got a cookout milkshake, and I put, I just put that on my 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 tooth where the hole was where they pulled it. And oh my god! But I was in the lobby, and I fell asleep in the lobby. And um, but yeah, I mean these are stories. These are memories. Um, Michelle, you had a you had an interesting ride with one of Stephanie's recruits, didn't you? That's it. And immediately when Brian started talking about who he rode with, I started laughing because that was the craziest thing. I didn't even know Stephanie like that. I need you guys to understand that like this, she's my sister now, but she wasn't my sister then. She, it just seemed like this is what Alliance people do. So I was like, hmm, okay. And I took this guy in the car, me and my brother, um, you guys know my brother, but I mean, him and I were like, what is going on? The guy's in the back seat. He's talking to himself. He is, he's sleeping with his eyes open. I was freaking out and it was nine and a half hours. I'm telling Stephanie, like you owe me for the rest of your life. Do you understand me? Like I'm scared of this man. Um, but it's just, it's insane. It's insane. And, and nobody has even mentioned, um, and I hate to be the the big, you know, you know, that older sibling, the oldest sibling where they're like, oh, my gosh, the younger sibling has it so much better. You guys don't know what we went through. And like, I hate to be that for the alliance. But and I haven't even been here that long. I'm actually here the shortest out of you, you three. But it's like when I my first conference, it started on Wednesday. You know, you're asking you're asking off of work. I worked still. I'm off on Wednesday and then it's finishing on Sunday. And you want to talk about, we didn't get no breaks. It was Wednesday, 7 a.m. until, yeah, until 12. And then just kidding, we're going to go downstairs and, and have a night out till 2 a.m. And then we'll see you back at 7 tomorrow. And it's like, what? There was no, put your, your put your butt in the seat and we'll give you 70,000 points toward the trip. It wasn't like that. I'm like, now we've condensed it down. You know, they got it starting at six o'clock, five o'clock on a Friday, just so that way the people that are getting off work on Fridays can make it. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. People, kids that are still in school. I know Stephanie, um, you know, her brother-in-law is in high school and like, all right, this is going to make it for him to be able to go. Right. So now it's a little bit of time Friday night. Guess what? You guys can go out, have a good time with your team after, because it's designed that way now. Oh, you want to get a good night's sleep? do that like this this stuff wasn't like this before you know now there's breaks in between where you can hang out with your team it's like oh my gosh when people are not like taking advantage so it's like it's almost unfair to say like oh this is too much it's too much time off it's too much to ask it's like it is a less it's less than a weekend uh it's less than a weekend and it's going to give you more than you can imagine like i don't think people understand like Going there, you don't know what this opportunity can do for you until you see what it has done for others, like on a national scale. And I mean, if it takes riding in the car for nine and a half hours with a psychopath, 
like to to get there and then still have what I want, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I just I wouldn't. And it is a story. Don't I mean if you don't have to, don't. You know what I'm saying? Safety first. But I mean I don't regret it. It made me and Stephanie closer. It's just it, it's funny now looking back. You know, it's crazy because what you said was we didn't have breaks. You know, we started early and went late. That's the fight that I was talking about we don't have anymore because we become a little bit soft, okay? And uh, we need to get that fight back into the whole team, the, the fight. And, and, and you got to learn to fight for what you want. And if it's not convenient, you got to fight harder to get it because nothing, uh, nothing worth getting is convenient. That's right. And we be, we become spoiled. I mean, People. huh? I will say this, Mike, uh, while hearing Michelle and you talk, it's like, you know, people want Stephanie numbers, Michelle numbers, Rojas numbers, but like people want to be a, I said this so many times, people want to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. You know, exactly. so like, people want to be like Andy Riddle, but don't want to travel. People want to be like, you know, people want to be like Mike and Stephanie, but they don't want to put in the work that it took to deal with all three of us. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, um, it's, it's funny. It's funny to me. Like, it's crazy because like, I see it and it's like, all right, now it's happening on our group. You know what I mean? And it's, yeah. You know, if you want to have big things, you got to go big. You know what I mean? You got to figure out a way. Like I remember Albright did the, um, did a great, great call, you know, about like being a terrorist to your family. You know, mm -hmm. sons in front of your excuses, as excuses of why not to go or or your family. Oh, stop! Like you said, stop being a terrorist. You know, so it's like again, people people want to be a beast until it requires you to change, and um, yeah. So yeah, you're so right on that, Brian. I mean, like I, I'm going to go back for a minute. Okay, let me tell you what fighting was. I'm going to talk about me for a minute, okay? When I first started, we had no hot spots in Tampa. And I had to drive to Jacksonville every Monday. And that meeting started at 9 o'clock. And guess what I did? I got my happy ass up out of bed every Monday to get to Jacksonville on time. And we did a night, and when then we did a, a, a hot, we did that, we did training all day. And then we had a night, uh, uh, a hot spot in the evening, and then we had a night all afterward. And I'd leave Jacksonville at around uh, midnight, and I would drive back home. That's a three and a half hour drive. So I spent almost six, seven hours in a car, and I don't feel sorry for people that say, "Oh, that's an hour away." I'm sorry, I don't care. If you want it, you'll drive it. If you don't want it, you'll just sit Chick Fil A's hiring. You know. What do you want me to tell you? I mean, it's never convenient. And, you know, I'm hearing people say, well, I don't have leads in my own backyard. No, you don't. Travel. I used to drive up to the Panhandle and run and run seven hours one way. Spend a night or two up there and run appointments. I used to run to Daytona and spend a night or two out there on the East Coast. I used to run in Okeechobee. I ran. I wasn't afraid to travel. Now I've got to learn to get back to that fighting spirit that I had back then because that's going to give me the, the growth that I wanted, the growth that I got then from doing that. We got to learn how to fight more, man. I mean, we've become too, is it soft? The word soft, Michelle, you're good at words. A little mushy. We became a little mushy. Mushy. Ooh. Yeah, mushy. <laughs> it's not that we can't get back to though. I think um, the fear isn't real, you know, um, I think you just got to think like, how can it benefit you? How can it benefit your family? How can it benefit your relationships? Um, how can it, like, I, I mean, just in all around. So if like, if it's yes, 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 yes. And all the win ways, it's like, okay. So then just ask for help to get there. If it's a financial thing, like, please, right. please, please don't let, do not let the money. Like if it's just money, like, please do not let the money stop you from going. Oh my gosh. Like there's, there's people that can help. There's ways around what you're thinking. We can get creative. It's just like, get there. If it's, if it's more than money, have another conversation, revisit on how it could benefit you. Cause it's changed my life. You know, it's crazy. I, um, we talk about this comp these conferences a lot. And we talk about it routinely a lot. 
And it's like I'm trying to beg people to get successful. Isn't it? it? Do you feel like that sometimes? You're begging people to get successful because we're making it a big deal because it is a big freaking deal. You know what I mean? And um, if we got to force you to go, I mean, where's the fight in you? So, Brian, you got any words you want to close out with? Oh, by the way, by the way, um, I think it's Saturday. We have... Um, is when the, um, go ahead, Steph, you're going to say something. No, I'm saying what you're saying. I just think that it. I, I be, oh, we're going to mess this up. It's 445 to 715 is our break. And that's the night we're having um, the award ceremony. So right. the award ceremony is not going to be um, a meal. It's not, they're not serving us dinner at the award ceremony. It's just going to be the ceremony. So that break from 4.45 to 7.15, please find something to eat so that y'all can be present. The ceremony is banging. It's like you've never been to it. You feel like you're at the Oscars or something crazy. So it's a dress to impress, black tie, um, find a nice sparkly dress or whatever, you know, makes you feel pretty. Um, but dress up, show up, be fed when you get there. So don't get there and say you didn't know. Um, and awards night is Saturday evening, Mike. So you're right. There will be open bar, uh, music entertainment afterwards. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a good time. Just make sure you eat on your break. Very good. I had to get that, uh, public announcement. What do they call that? A PBA public announcement. Um, Brian, anything you want to close out with? I'm going to start with you first, bro. Um, yeah. So like, <laughs> like, I just texted one of my boys. So like, if you, like, if you don't come, like <laughs> I'm laughing because there was a text message I sent out, but the, like Alex Avian has another word for wimps. Like, and if you weren't at breakthrough, you missed it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but as an insight though, for people that, you know. <laughs> So, no, I, I think, um, you know, let's double, let's double the enrollments that are, that, that, that we have right now. Let's double, let's double, you know, the number of NACON tickets that we have. Why not a rising tide? I know Michelle and I have a goal for that, you know, um, but a rising tide races all the ships. Why don't we just double? Why don't we just get, you know, if you have, if you have 10 tickets, let's get 20. If you have 20, let's get 40. If you have 40, let's get 80. If you have 80, let's get, come on, 160. You know what I mean? Let's just double. Um, so, and and then um, Jake and Veray would love to see another set of fireworks. That'd be great for them. They're all, <laughs> they're all the way in the West Coast. So whatever you have to do, I don't know if there's a two thumbs up that you do, um, but they want, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm done. <laughs> How about you, Michelle? Anything you want to close out with, buddy? Uh, I think let's just like, because even even when we're talking about it, I'm like, yeah, we're, it, it, we're still begging. And it's like, this is just, it got to be the standard. Like it just, we just have to expect it. You want to be successful with us. You plan on being in business with us. Come January 29th, you got to be in Dallas January 26th. The kids there's just no other way. I don't know anybody in this business that's making money with us that doesn't go. And then, and it's, it's not that, um, you know, you can't be the exception. I'm not saying that you can't, I'm just saying you're, you're fighting against the grain. It's like, why not just make it easy on yourself? Just get there. Um, even if you are the one, do you know what I'm saying? Like who, who cares? Just, and, and if you were the one who made money, you're going to make more going. So, um, this is what I expect. I'm starting to expect it from my team. You guys expect it from me. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's just, we got to raise the bar. It's only going to benefit you. You know, you said something a while ago on another conference call. If you're in the business and you don't go, you're not in the business. Exactly. And uh, I heard that. And I said, oh, my God. She just smacked everybody in the chops with that one. I liked it. The sweet Michelle just, wow. Oof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you, Stephanie? Anything you want to close out with? Um, you know, no, it's just like, let's get there. I, I, I said the other day, if you're not going to conference, you're setting your business back six months. 
you know, so if you're willing to struggle and do it your way for six more months before you're ready to ask for help, you know, that okay, if you can live with mediocrity, okay. But Michelle said it, there's nobody in this business who's killing it, who doesn't go to conference. So, you know, let's just, we're here to help. We're here to show you the way so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So let's just get it. It's a new year. Let's, you know, we're already had the biggest payout in arc history in January, 2024. How crazy is that, that we started the year off so strong. So let's just keep doing it. Exactly. Well, What's the dates of the conference again? You all have your flights in your hotels, right? Mm -hmm. January 26th through the 28th. Okay. I got my flight. I got my hotel. And um, um, here's one thing that I will say. We keep saying the same thing over and over and over to the same people. You know what we need to start doing, I think? Start saying the same thing to new people. That's how we're going to grow. Start talking to new people about this, the way you're talking about it now to the old people. And uh, that's how we're gonna, that's how we're gonna fill Coliseums. So guys, let's, uh, let's make this weekend a good weekend for everybody. Run, get out there and run some appointments and we will see you, will we, will we have another call before between now and co uh, conference? Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what the date is today. That's not good, Mike. It's uh, you know, Oh, it's a oh, we'll have, we'll have we another call. We still got two weeks. All right, all right, all right. We'll have see like you all soon. <laughs> hey, hooray. We'll see, we'll see you at conference. We'll have more fireworks for you, buddy. But like this. <laughs> yeah, you have to do it. You have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Here, guys. All right, guys. See you all later. Good night. Bye. Bye.